Hey everyone, this is Ryan Mitchell with TinyLife.com and today I wanted to answer some questions about solar generators. Uh, I'm here in my tiny house which uh, is powered by solar panels. I have a 4,000 watt panel array out there and uh, I put together a post recently about solar generators which are kind of smaller units that are usually 1 to 200 watts. Uh, that are kind of portable, uh, used for, you know, learning about solar, little, like kind of fun projects, uh, maybe something you keep in case, you know, the power goes out or if you're camping or you do RV, things like that. Uh, so this video is going to be embedded in the post uh, that I have breaking down all this stuff. So if you want to learn more about solar generators, uh, check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, if you're on the post, I'm going to be answering some questions. So I had folks email me questions. Uh, if you'd like to ask questions in the future, uh, you'll need to join my newsletter email list and basically I solicit questions from people there. So if you want to ask questions, you need to be on the newsletter. And uh, here's what some people had to say. Uh, Gary from Ohio asked, what is the simple answer to how and which AC things can be powered by a 200 to 250 watt solar array, for example, by Harbor Freight. Uh, and I chose this question specifically because he mentioned the Harbor Freight thing. So a lot of people, when they're thinking about solar generators and things like that, they often cons are considering the Harbor Freight kits that are out there. Uh, they're, I think they started around 100 watts and they may go up from there. Um, in general, these things have a, a pretty limited use, and uh, I find that especially like the, the ones from the Harbor Freight are pretty low quality. Uh, so what I suggest is going with some of the brands I mentioned in the post, or build your own, which I talk about some of the components that go into it. Now, for 200 to 250 watts of panels, uh, basically you need to consider not just how much power you can produce, but how much power you can store and what your inverter can handle. Uh, so from there, we can kind of understand a little bit about what uh, can be powered from something like this. Now, I break down the different types and uh, amp hours of the different uh, brands that I, I suggest out there. But typically, when it comes to solar generators, you're gonna be powering things like your cell phone, mobile devices, a laptop, maybe a new modern uh, TV that's pretty small, uh, maybe some LED lights, things that are very low power. Uh, you're really not gonna be able to power many things um, with a solar generator that are larger in size. Uh, so for example, these lights here, these are all LED puck lights and they consume about four watts uh, of power when they're running. Uh, my fridge here, this runs about 20 minutes out of every hour and while it's running those 20 minutes it's usually using about 60 to 80 watts okay so it's certainly something that you could power off of your solar generator but the question is how long and that really depends on the battery size and how much power you're producing so typically I'd say you're probably going to get a couple hours at most out of a solar generator for something like a small fridge. Anything with a heating coil, anything that's a, a major appliance, uh, heaters, air conditioners, coffee pots, hot plates, things like that are just outside of the realm of, of possibility for a solar generator. Our next question comes from Tasha from Ontario, Canada. Uh, she says, as someone who is interested in using solar energy in the future, but has no clue about setting it up or maintaining it, uh, was it difficult to do? Would you re recommend it for newbies? So I think solar is one of those things that the biggest thing you need to understand is just getting your head around what's realistic about what you can power and uh, what is not. And understanding that uh, unless you are just made of money that there are going to be some lifestyle changes. For example, uh, all these lights here are LED, so that's not a big deal. But when it's hot or cold, I really need to be considering how much power I have in the 
battery banks, how much power I'm producing, and what the weather is like outside because those heating and cooling draws for my large system uh, really are taxing on it and I only have a limited window that I can run those. So for a solar generator uh, and just solar in gen general, you really need to be thinking about what, um, what is realistic. Now in terms of can you set it up on your own? Uh, I think if you're very handy, a little bit of an engineer and math minded person, um, and maybe you've done some electrical work that it can be done uh, with some good effort. Uh, for those who really don't have like a handy streak to them or a technical streak or have never done electrical before, that's when I suggest if you're doing a larger system to reach out to a professional because uh, for those size systems, you're really going to need to be, you know, in code compliance and, and doing things correctly. And it's also a lot of power that you need to consider. What's nice about solar generators is that they're a nice little bite-sized thing that you uh, an average person can just start playing with and it's very approachable. So that's why I think solar generators have a good position as like just kind of the entry level kind of thing to learn more about solar and give you that perspective of what's possible and what's not. So uh, Amber from South Carolina asks, are there any options that are cost friendly and can charge small appliances, say a cell phone or a laptop? Yes, absolutely. Um, pretty much all the solar generators that I talk about in the post could handle a laptop or, uh, you know, LEDs, things like that, phone. Uh, and in terms of cost, you're typically looking at between one and three dollars per watt uh, on the production side. So, um, that roughly works out to be between $200 and $500 for a basic uh, solar generator. Um, when you go up to larger systems, you have economy of scale and it, get, it works out to be about a dollar a watt for the whole system, including your batteries and inverters and all that kind of stuff. Um, Connie from Louisiana asks, can I get one that automatically comes on when the power is out? Uh, that is possible, but it does require a little bit of extra work. And I would say that's probably more suited to a, a standalone system that's professionally installed. Um, the reason for that, I'm not going to go into this video, but yes, you can do that. Uh, what's good for solar generators is it's something that you, let's say you have a battery bank, that you keep that battery bank like plugged in somewhere so it's always being topped off. So the power does go out, uh, you can actually just plug things in and you have a power source for a while. And if the power stays out for a while, you then have the solar power panels to top off that those batteries. So they're, they're good for that use. Uh, Rosemary in Oregon asks, I've heard it's easy to switch to solar after building your tiny house for regular electricity. Is this true or is it necessary to plan ahead if you're thinking about going solar down the line? I would say if you want to go solar um, or you're thinking about going solar, plan ahead 100%. Uh, and not only that, it it typically makes good sense. There's not a lot of things that you're going to actually have to spend a lot more money on, like the difference between how you set things up. So for example, like these are all LED lights. I would choose those whether or not I was on solar because they're efficient. There's no bulbs to change. They last for practically ever. Um, my air conditioner, you know, if I was paying for power and I was on the grid, well, I'd want an efficient air conditioner, right? Because I, I want my bill to be smaller. Uh, so you just make those decisions and um, it may be a little bit more upfront, but I think it's the ROI, the return investment is usually pretty quick and then it sets you up for success if you do want to go solar. So I would say keep that, uh, if you want to do that, keep that in, that goal in your design. Uh, is there something that I should consider besides solar, wind, hydro, or geothermal, Jerry in California? Jerry, um, I would say that for the most part, practically speaking, that solar is going to be 
uh, the most useful for the most amount of people. There are some very unique situations where wind will work and hydro will work. Geothermal is just frankly outside of the, the scope of most people um, at a personal level. So if like large companies or municipalities might do something with geothermal, but not the individual. Uh, wind and hydro, I would say, if everyone around you is doing wind farms, then maybe you have the, the option to do wind farms. If you have a very specific set of um, parameters for water, mainly a large amount of water dropping uh, a good distance vertically, uh, then that might be an option for hydro. And that might be something you look at, but by and large, solar is going to be your best option for most places, for the most amount of people. Are solar generators efficient enough to handle an entire house and uh, do they need to be installed in arrays? So in general, solar generators are going to be good for small, low power applications where you just need it for a limited amount of time. Or you might be camping or RVing or like a disaster kind of scenario. So in general, I would say choose the right tool for the job. Solar generators are for smaller tasks, full arrays are powering entire houses. All right, our next, uh, our final question here is gonna be, are they hard to set up and are they expensive? I kind of touched on this a little bit, but basically solar generators are gonna be a little bit more expensive because they're kind of more fully integrated package systems. They're kind of turnkey ready to go off the shelf. Because of that, they're going to be a bit more expensive. Like I said, around three bucks per watt is typically what you're looking at. Two to five hundred bucks uh, for a pretty entry level to mid level system. Um, and for are they easy to set up? Um, that's one of the main advantages of solar generators is that they are that easy to set up because, uh, like I said, they're they're plug and play. They're ready to go, and that's kind of one of the big appeals of solar generators is that. Um, it doesn't require a lot of setup. You can pull it out of the box, maybe charge it up for the first time, and you're ready to go. So guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, again, my name is Ryan Mitchell with thetinylife.com. If you'd like to be featured in future videos where we answer some questions, please do go to thetinylife.com slash newsletter. You'll sign up there uh, to join our email list, and every now and then we shoot out an email to folks to ask some questions about upcoming posts that we're working on, and things that they'd like to know about. So uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks so much. Bye.